Hi! In this video, we're going to look at some uses of radiation. One use of alpha that you need to be familiar with is in smoke detectors. When there is no smoke, the alpha radiation ionizes the air, forming charged particles which complete the circuit of the smoke detector. A fire produces smoke, which absorbs the alpha particles so the air is no longer ionized. The circuit is broken so current no longer flows, causing the alarm to ring. One use of beta radiation is to control the thickness of certain materials, such as paper. The thickness can be measured by how many beta particles pass through it each second. All food contains microorganisms. This is completely normal, but they can reduce the shelf life of food. Gamma radiation can be used in this scenario. The food products are irradiated with gamma, which destroys the microorganisms and extends the usable lifetime of the food. Gamma radiation can also be used to sterilize medical equipment, perform PET scans to identify tumors, or even irradiate cancerous cells in radiotherapy. Ever wondered how all paper ends up the exact same thickness? Me neither. But we'll look at the use of beta radiation to control material thickness in a little more detail anyway. Paper, or thin metal, are common materials for this, because beta can penetrate these. When the material is too thick, the count rate detected by the Geiger counter decreases. Conversely, if the material gets too thin, a higher count rate is recorded by the Geiger counter. The reason we have covered this use in extra detail is because it comes up so often in exams. A factory is producing sheets of lead, which are 2.5 centimeters thick. Lead is passed between two rollers whose separation can be changed. A Geiger counter and a radioactive source are placed either side of the lead sheets. When the lead sheets are 2.5 centimeters thick, the count rate is 60 counts per second. Okay. Part 1 tells us to explain how this allows the thickness of the lead to be monitored for three marks. This is an explain question, so we need to give reasons for our answers. Let's first consider what happens when the lead is too thick or too thin. We know the lead is too thick when count rate drops below 60 counts per second. Saying something similar to this gains the first mark. Remember, referring to the values in the question will get you a long way in exams, and you need it for the mark here. If the count rate goes above 60 counts per second, then the lead is too thin. This is the second mark. State the obvious in your exam. Don't just assume that this is implied by your first sentence. Also, remember, this is an explain question. These count rates change because thicker lead absorbs more radiation. You can say the opposite, either will get you that third mark. A good rule of thumb for explain questions is to have phrases like this happens because or which is a result of to back up your statements. All right, part two requires you to suggest the type of radiation source the factory uses explaining your answer. Again, this is three marks, so we'll make three separate points. This is a suggest question. These normally require a bit of thinking outside the box. Before we start, let's look at our scenario. We are used to using beta radiation for material thickness, but beta cannot penetrate 2.5 centimeter thick lead at all. Gamma radiation is the correct type of radiation to use here, and suggesting this gets the first mark. Now, let's explain why we didn't choose the other forms of radiation. Neither alpha or beta can penetrate even thin lead. This statement gains mark two. And finally, we need to justify our choice of gamma. We chose gamma because it can penetrate lead, or we can say that it isn't fully absorbed by lead. These mean the same thing. That's mark three. Alpha, beta, and gamma sources can be used in smoke detectors, measuring material thickness, 
and extending shelf life of food products, among other uses. Depending on the properties of the radiation type, different applications will be more appropriate. It's on you to be able to recall these properties and decide the best type of radiation for a variety of uses, and you will normally have to justify your answer. Don't forget to check out all our other fantastic revision resources at Save My Exams.